one. Hello, everybody. I'm Linda. I'm the old bird with Gotta Be Handmade live. Thank you so much for joining me. I bring attention to handmade artists through my social media platforms. And today I have an amazing artist joining me. His work is, I would say they are showstoppers. Every time I'm scrolling through and I see a piece of his art, it just catches my attention. His name is Andrew Duby or Dubé. What is it, Andrew? I say Duby. Some people say Dubé. I'll certainly answer to either. Bless your heart. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy I'm, to finally be here. I'm telling you, I'm a big fan. I really am. <laughs> You're too kind. <laughs> Look, you do these amazing paintings. Tell me, what is your medium? So my medium is watercolor. Um, I paint mostly in watercolor. I do dabble in other stuff, and occasionally you'll get a Papa, Papa acrylic or something in there, but it's mostly watercolor, some pen, and ink is what I stick to. Okay. Now, what, are, what do you paint on? What are the surfaces? So I generally use just basic watercolor paper. I uh, buy it in bulk and it's um, just regular cold press watercolor paper. I'm not actually sure the number, um, but uh, I just buy a big bulk box. We have a cool art store here. I live in Seattle, so we have a lot of art places and I buy a bulk box and that's what I go through. Um, for other projects, uh, I use different. I can use different kinds of paper. Um, this custom one, I'll show you in a bit. I've got a. Uh, it's a handmade paper, so it's oh. a lot um, tougher. It has a lot more texture to it, but it just absorbs the color in a completely different way. Um, now your pieces. Where would we put them? Because this paper, when we um, uh, get a piece from you, will we have to frame it? And where can we hang it? So you can hang them, you, as long as you cover them with glass, you can hang them anywhere. Um, the benefit of the glass is it protects the art. Um, obviously, if you're going to put it, when you're hanging art in your home, you always want to think about where the sun is going to hit and where um, you're going to place your pieces because after time, sun will wear out down your art. Um, and that's true for really, truly almost any medium. Um, if you're super concerned about it, you can also buy, they sell clear coat spray at any hardware store and you can clear coat the art and that gives it an extra coat of protection. Um, some of my pieces I've hung in frames that don't have glass and I'll clear coat them. That way they have some protection. Um, but yeah, when you get it from me, you're just going to get a piece of paper with essentially the paint on it. So the glass or a clear coat is going to protect it for you. Okay. So we have to frame it ourselves. Yeah. For okay. the right now, I don't do framing just because it would just make the cost of shipping would be exponential. Yes, it would. Yes, it would. Now, I love your work. I think it would be perfect in your office, a place where you're going to be able to be, I would say, get a smile every mm -hmm. day. And I think in your office would be a perfect place, especially with so many of us staying home now. Now, tell me. Andrew, how did you get started? So I was actually homeschooled when I was little. My mother, we lived on a farm and my mom homeschooled us. And so in the afternoons when we were done with school, she didn't really want us to like play or watch TV or something. So we always had to be doing something. And so she taught us how to craft and how to do, I've crocheted and I've knit and I've sewed and I've painted and I've done all of these things I learned how to do. And then as I got older, I, I realized that they were not just crafts, they were coping skills and they were, um, you know, positive things to help you get through the day. And so I kept doing them and uh, it was about five, four or five years ago, I started, uh, I was like, well, let's start selling some of this stuff because I got a bunch in my house and I started selling acrylic paintings. Um, and then uh, I played around with watercolor for the first time. And I, that's what I switched. It was 
more advantageous for me to sell watercolor because I lived in Alaska at that point. So shipping was a lot easier if it's paper. Shipping anything that's not paper is going to cost too much money. And yeah. I really enjoyed watercolor. So I stuck with it. And I've been painting watercolor now for probably three or four years. I'm on my third year of having my Etsy shop, like actually up and running. And um, yeah, I mean, if I've just been painting away and I taught myself how to do it all. I don't have any, didn't go to school for it. Just kind of learned myself. Oh my goodness. I'm telling you, it shows in your work. Your work is common. To me, it's very common. So I can see it being some something that you would do for coping skills because yeah. it is very common. And that's the thing that is the showstopper whenever I'm scrolling through and see your word. It's very common. I just love it. Yeah, I think the I mean, I think we as makers, we know that when you're doing something and when you're working with your hands and your brain and being creative, it really does bring a sense of calm and peace to you. And yeah. it's really is whatever your medium is, it can be very soothing. And um, I, that I paint all of the time. Uh, I was with my family for the last week and I painted like 35 paintings sitting at my grandma's table. So yeah. it definitely is a good, healthy coping skill. Yes. Now, you got to share something with us. Did Do you have a piece you can show us now? Yes, I have two things I want to show you. First, I'm going to show you my custom piece that I've been working on. And okay. it's on a, it is on a piece of paper about two foot by three foot. And it is handmade paper. And it is for a customer oh, who is going to give it to her, uh, her friend. They own a farm. And this is their farm truck and their their business logo and i've been oh. working on i've been working on this all week and yeah. so that one's really cool and i'm so enjoying display in their place of business yes it's she's going to gift it to her friend um it's for their business and so the logo on the truck is their farm logo and this is an actual i took a picture of their truck and i drew their truck it um, is amazing i didn't know you did work uh, for for businesses like that. Yeah, she reached out to me. She's a she's a good customer of mine, a good friend of mine, and she reached out and said, "Hey, do you think I can do this?" And I was like, "Well, I've certainly never painted a truck before, but I can try." And we've had a lot of fun building it together, and I am so happy with the piece, and I think yes. it's gorgeous. And I've still got a lot of work to do on it, um, but I'm taking my time and really enjoying the experience. Uh, yeah. watercolor, watercolor is usually uh, kind of a feminine medium. And so it's fun to paint a truck because that's kind of a masculine thing. So it's a fun balance. Yeah. Now, what size piece is that? So that piece is actually about two foot by three foot. It's very big. Okay. Um, I don't usually paint that big unless I have a custom order just because of space. And, um, you know, I usually paint smaller. Most of my pieces, I either do nine by 12 or eight by 10. Yes. Or oh, small. That's beautiful. I'm telling you, we, all of us that have small businesses and we go live on our social medias, need our logos uh, in our uh, videos. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's amazing. Okay, everybody. If you're listening and you're watching our broadcast, at the end of the broadcast, I'm going to list his social media links as well as his Etsy shop. Reach out to him. Show us that piece again. And get a custom order for your business with your logo to go in your live shops. It is amazing, Andrew. I love it. Thank you. And I am everybody, he very said, this, is, this is handmade paper. That's new. Yeah. So I didn't make the paper. Um, I didn't. I just bought it from the store. But it is that beautiful handmade paper with the raw edges. And so when they get it framed, they can get it kind of open framed and it's going to look stunning. Um, yes, it is. I, you know. Yes. And you know, so many couples now are having virtual weddings and they need their initials. Mm -hmm. And some couples even have their own logos. 
Yep. That's pretty cool. I've yes. not known the logos, but the, the, the initial stuff is really cool. The stuff we can do for weddings is amazing. Yes. And I love a creative wedding. Yeah. Now, Andrew, do you have another piece we can see? I do. So this is one of my smaller pieces. So she is eight by 10 and uh, I mix, I use some stamps and her face is a stamp, but then the rest of it I drew myself and I painted everything. Um, and I it's love- It's a stamp? Yes, the face is a stamp. I don't, I do draw faces, but I didn't draw this one. Um, <laughs> I like to mix, I like to play with uh, mixing things. So the the face in this one is ink. So then it doesn't bleed or, or blend. And then I'm able to build the flowers into it and yes. let the flowers kind of be a little more fluid around her. Oh, that is gorgeous. I just love her. Yeah, I have fun trying to, uh, I like flowers and I like flowers. I like painting them because you don't have to, uh, you know, like with this truck, I have to paint the tires have to be gray or br or black because that's what tires are colored. But flowers can be any color. You can paint a purple flower, a yellow flower, a red flower. It doesn't matter. And so I like having the freedom to do that. And so I've always gravitated towards drawing and creating floral pieces because I like the freedom in the color aspect of it. So these were me practicing my drawing skills and working on getting a more realistic flower, but still kind of being me. Yes. Now you said recently you've been doing a lot of pieces. Why? Um, just, I go through phases and I, uh, I have a lot of different books and a lot of different things and I get inspired by different things. Um, I've also been into mermaids lately. I've probably done like 15 mermaids. Um, it's just whatever, I don't know that I think the seasons make me change and I, it's kind of fun. It's kind of like a different collection every so often. And then I move to something new. Yes, I understand. I know how you feel right now. I'm creating quilt patterns. And I'm just into it. I'm up all night sometimes. <laughs> and I have to go over and go to bed. And I go to bed and I get back up and I work on it. And I go to bed and I get back up. Because right now I'm into it. So I understand. Yeah, you got to ride that wave of mo the momentum. And uh, it's yes. fun. And sometimes when you're not feeling creative, it's good to kind of try something new. And other times when you are feeling creative, just roll with it. Mm -hmm. I love the watercolors. Now, Andrew, give us an idea of the truck. What would be the price range? Because I know everybody's would be different. But give yeah. us the price range, no. good guesstimate. For this particular piece, it's 150. Um, okay. And that's based on like the logo and the truck. And so I would say for a piece this large, probably between 100 and 200, depending on what you're looking for. For my smaller pieces, yeah. like this one, she's, she's $49. She's one of my more... Most of my more high-end pieces in my shop, I have a lot of, I have a lot of floral pieces that are much more reasonably priced, like fifteen, twenty dollars. Um, Let's see the floral again. It's beautiful. Thank yes, you. It's beautiful. It's so I have a wide range when it comes to prices. It depends on the the basically the amount of work it takes for me to put them together. Um, so I have everything from $5 for bookmarks to this custom piece is, uh, you know, 150 and I have anywhere in between. And if you have a budget and you want something, I am more than willing to work with you and figure out what we can do to get you the piece that you need. Um, I love making custom pieces. I've actually done five this last week and the truck being one of them. And so it's been, that's just, it's just fun to work with a customer and figure out how I can get you what you want and I can do it. And if I have a budget, we figure it out within there. Somebody's saying it's very pretty. Thank you so much thank and you. Thank you for joining us. I love your work. I'd thank like you. to encourage you to keep on going. 
and keep on creating. And everybody, again, I'm going to post his social media links as well as his Etsy shop uh, link immediately following the broadcast. Now, Andrew, before we close, tell me, do you have something that nobody knows about that you're thinking on, thinking about working on or adding to your your shop or something that you, you know, creative say, I've never tried that. I think I will this summer. What is it for you? I have been playing around a bit more recently with um, adding things to the watercolor. So specifically, I've used some glitter in the watercolor, um, which is kind of fun because it's adding something to it. Um, I did it on a very small scale. I just did some bookmarks because I was able to kind of keep it closed. But I do think now that I've been playing with this like really nice beautiful paper. I thought yeah. about kind of playing with the paper and then maybe playing with an additive. I would certainly have to like seal it because glitter would fall off, but um, it's been kind of fun. I got my hands on some really nice uh, glittery stuff a couple months ago and I just kind of had it sitting in the drawer and who knows? I look forward to seeing it. And I look, I look forward to your growing as an artist, your work is already tremendous. I can't wait to see what you come up with. Thank you so much. And thank you for joining me. I really appreciate it. I appreciate it so much. I have to say thank you, Linda, because your presence online is wonderful. You are so soothing and so calming and so loving. And I know that the internet loves listening to you and just you bring so much to the table and I thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Andre. Now look, I mean, Andrew, now look, everybody, I'm telling you, you have to visit his Etsy shop. You heard him mention the bookmarks. Wait until you get there and you'll see the items that he carries. You've seen a custom piece. Now, if you're in business, you're at home. You know we have to go live. Times have changed. We've got to go live on our social medias. And you're going to need something, that piece that's behind you, that's with you on camera, that can be recognized everywhere. He can do it. So contact him immediately following the broadcast. I'll put all of his links and you'll be able to get in touch with him. Now look, pass this broadcast on. You know people that's interested in these amazing handmade artists. Tell them about the broadcast. Share this link. Put it on your personal page so somebody else can have the pleasure of meeting this fantastic handmade artist. And Andrew again, I thank you. And I, look, you've got to keep on going. The world needs your calming work, especially now. We've got to have it. So do it for us. Keep on going and growing your business. Thank you so much, Linda. I will. And everybody remember, for the best, it's just. Be handmade. Bye-bye.